Well, good morning. How's everybody doing today? Ready to worship the Lord? You ready to enter into His presence and experience something that is so needed in the Christian life? I don't know about you guys, but if we're not uh, on our guard, the enemy is going to sneak in and he's going to start to erode your hope and your peace and your joy. And if you start meditating on all of the things that are going wrong, you will find yourself alienated from the peace of God. And that is exactly what the enemy wants for your life. He wants you as far away from the peace of God as he can get you. Because the further away you are from the peace of the Lord, the darker things are all around you. So today it's time to turn our eyes to the heavens. It's time to start putting our hopes and our minds on heavenly things where Christ is seated and He has promised the believer that we too will be seated there. So armed with that truth this morning, armed with the truth that God has done something for us that we cannot do for ourselves, it is a gift of grace so that none of us can boast in the goodness of ourselves, but we boast in the goodness of God because He is a father to the fatherless. He is the hope of the hopeless. He fills our hearts with good things. And today we get to celebrate it. So won't you celebrate with me as we get ready to sing today. Let's stand together. Father, as we arm our hearts to rejoice in you today as we prepare to offer a sacrifice of praise. God, we may not feel like it this morning. It may not be a good day for us. But it's a great day because you are here. You are ready to heal. You are ready to restore us. Help us to remember that, God. Help us to dwell on your goodness, not our inadequacy. Help us to remember, to remain in you, God. Because apart from you, we can do nothing at all. So in your strength, Lord Jesus, we stand today. And in your joy, we sing. Let's sing together. Gathered in your name, calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, like a desire will burn our hearts with truth. Because you're the reason we're here, and you're the reason we're singing. Singing, open up the heavens, we want to see. Open up the floodgates, a mighty rivers flowing from your heart and filling every part of our praise. Your presence in this place, your glory on our face, look into the sky. Sending like a cloud, you're standing with us now. A mighty river is flowing from your heart and filling every part of our praise. Show us, show us your glory. We want to see you. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory. Us your glory, show us, show us your power, show us, show us your glory, Lord. Open up, open up the heavens. We want to see you open up 
out the floodgates A mighty river is flowing from your heart And filling every part of our praise Open the earth, open up the heavens We want to see you open up the floodgates A mighty river is flowing from your heart and filling every part of our praise. Show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. Show us. Show us your glory, show us, show us your power, show us, show us your glory, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. The moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice have led me through the fire in darkness night and you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God it's all my life all my life you have been faithful. Thank you, Lord. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Why, church? Because your goodness is running after running after me your goodness is running after it's running after me with my life laid down I'm surrendered now I give you everything your goodness is running after it's running after me let's declare it again your goodness is running after it's running after me your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Let's sing it. All my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God yes I will sing 
of the goodness of God. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I all I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their Above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, to mercies I see. I have needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and the peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Let's sing it out. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Oh, I have needed thy hand that provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Jesus, we thank you for your faithfulness, Lord, that in spite of the changing seasons, in spite of our changing lives, our changing feelings toward you, O oh God, you never change. You remain faithful. Always, because you cannot deny who you are in your nature. You are a faithful God and you've called us to be a faithful people. Oh God, that we might be your faithful people. That we would remember your mercies anew every morning. That you've never left us or forsaken us. We stand complete in Christ today. Thank you, God. That we can remember that in your presence there is fullness of joy. Remind us, Holy Spirit, remind us when our hearts are heavy and burdened by things of the world. 
They bring us no profit. That your joy is is, is awakened to us. We are aware of it. We have been enlightened by it and illuminated by your joy. Fill us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated, family. Children, why don't you guys come on up? I got a lesson for you. How's everybody doing? This is like the most I think we've had since VBS. This is awesome. It's good to see you guys. Today I want to talk to you about faith. Who here knows what faith is? Or has an idea about what faith is? Kendall, were you raising your hand or are you just moving your hand? Oh, no. Anybody got an idea? Jaren. Sure, and and what about for Christians specifically? What is our faith? What do we believe in? We believe in Jesus. Well said, Jaron. Well said. We believe in Jesus. And our faith can be strengthened as we get to know Jesus more. Did you guys know that? That the amount of faith that you have is directly related to how much you know Jesus? And... We've been talking a whole lot about having joy, even in hard times, as a church. And do you think that learning how to have joy in hard times takes more than just work, but it would take faith? We would have to believe that Jesus said that he would be with us even in the hard times, and that's cause for joy. Now, when Jesus was on the earth, he ministered to people, didn't he? And he preached to them, and he taught them about faith. And he talks about a mustard seed-sized faith. Now, some of you have been with us for quite some time, and so you may have held a mustard seed. But who here has never held a mustard seed? Maybe you haven't. But I want to show you guys how big a mustard seed really is. And Jesus said, if your faith was this big, you could uproot a mulberry bush and toss it into the sea. Now that sounds pretty wild, doesn't it? And all he said is that your faith had to be that big. That's not very big, is it? So what does that tell us about God? If, if, a, if faith this small is enough, how big does that make God? Pretty big if all you need is this much, right? Now, do you think that Jesus literally meant that if we had faith that a mulberry bush would pull itself out Of the ground and throw itself into the water? I don't think so. Right? What Jesus was trying to explain to us is that with faith. faith, Oh, look at that. It's so small I almost lost it. With faith, we can do impossible things. Who here thinks that it would be impossible for you to enjoy yourself at school? Look, it's fair. That's a fair thing, okay? Look, you hear what we say? That's impossible. But who said it was impossible? Did God say it was impossible or did you say it was impossible? We say those things. And so isn't it beautiful that Jesus says, if you have faith, this much faith, that I actually love you and that I am actually telling you that going to school or doing something you don't want to do isn't impossible. Because if you love me, then you can hear me be the one to ask, I want you to go to school today, and I want you to learn. If Jesus asked you to go to school, would you say, eh. Would 
Would you do that? Look, I've been a kid before. I've done that when I had to go to school, so I'm sure that you guys do too. Okay? Sometimes it's like that. But if Jesus were to ask you to get up and go to school and to be kind to people, what do you think? Do you think you'd say, Jesus, that's impossible? Or would you say, would you come with me? Won't you come with me, Jesus? It takes this much faith to ask the Lord to come with you. Children, if you ask him now to come with you, you'll understand that what you're asking is that you'll go with him. And he wants to take you wherever he needs you to go. And he wants you to do it with a spirit of love in your heart. Not thinking about what you want so much. But just saying, God, I want so much for things to go my way. But I believe this much, this much that you can change me. And watch him change you, children. And you'll find out that that little mustard seed has grown. And Jesus tells us, and it's true, that the mustard seed becomes one of the biggest trees in the world where all the birds can come and make a nest in. Your faith may start this little, but as long as you follow Jesus and you listen to him, read his word, he's telling you. Listen to your parents. Listen to godly counsel. And your faith will grow. And you will be strong. You won't be so scared. Okay? Faith is the ultimate weapon against fear. Okay? So trust in the Lord. Believe. Have faith as small as a mustard seed. And watch amazing things happen in your life that God brings to pass. You guys want to try? You guys think you can remember the mustard seed? Would, would having one in your pocket help you remember better? You think so? A tangible gospel. All right. You want one? You want to take one? Sure. Look at how small it is. Just feel them in your fingers. And they're just so tiny. Tiny, itty bitty. And if it's all you want, if all, it's all you got, it's enough. <coughs> Remember that. If it's all you have, it's enough. Okay? It's so tiny. Let's ask the Lord, okay, to help us. Let's pray. Children, oh, God, help us. Help us to have faith as tiny as this mustard seed, Lord, and to believe that you will make it grow. Help these children. Help us all to press into you. Help us to love you, Lord. And to follow your example. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys. Well, we've got some buckets right behind you. And we're going to do a, a little mission bucket time. And uh, you'll bring that back up. And I've got a fruit snack for your participation.
All right. Well, we've got a few upcoming announcements. Um, as, as we know, the uh, youth group is continuing to meet, and it'll meet right after uh, service this morning, and um, we've got a, a fun lesson planned and uh, a good time to be had. So uh, if you are visiting with us and you are between the ages of 10 and 18, you're the right age. It's right after church. And, uh, and, and come and, and join me as uh, we explore God's Word together. Next weekend, everybody, is the fried chicken dinner. Oh, boy, oh, boy. It's going to be great. There's still opportunity to sign up in the back to help and to bring a dessert. Um, and, uh, and then just uh, make sure to tell your friends. Bring as many people as you possibly can. We upped our order. We've got more chicken coming. Um, so uh, we served just about 200 last time, and we're going to hope for uh, about 250 this time. So, um, Lord willing, it'll all be gone. And I say that with great humility, because if it's not, that means that some of us might get to take some home. Because, <laughs> you know, enough is never enough sometimes when it comes to fried chicken. Can I get an amen? amen. All right. All right, enough of that. Um, Adult Sunday School is continuing on in the book of Acts. If, uh, if you are a new believer or if you are a seasoned believer and you love to be reminded about what happened after Jesus ascended, how the church became what it is in the Word, uh, check out the book of Acts. Come and see. 9 o'clock to 9.45, bring your Bibles. Bring your Bibles. That would uh, be very helpful in a Bible study to have your Bible. Um, and, and it's amazing. Sometimes you have it right here on your phone. So sometimes Bibles are hidden. The churchwide event coming up on the 15th of October, the bonfire and the, the hayride, I just want to make sure that Yes, it is a youth ministry because we're hoping for lots of kids to come and enjoy. Um, but moms and dads and everyone who comes to this church, and if you have friends, come on out. We're all going to we'll have more information, but it's going to be out at the Kyle's residence. And, uh, and, and they have plenty of room, and we have a big uh, get-together to uh, figure out how we're going to do that this week. And uh, we will have fine details for you um, next weekend. Trunk or Treat's coming up. The candy's piling up. Good job, everybody. It's going to be awesome, and it's going to be here before we know it. Um, we are finishing up another month. Last Sunday of September 22. Yeah, it's fast. It's fast. Time waits for no man. So we must redeem as much of the time as we possibly can. And uh, helping in the community is a wonderful way to do it. And the church does that through the gifts that you all give so generously week in and week out. And so we thank you for your generosity. And we remember that the word tells us that God loves a cheerful giver. We never want to give out of compulsion. We don't want to give because we have to. But we give because of what God has done for us. We give out of great joy. Always out of joy, please. Never, never from any other spirit. And uh, if you are new here, it's right in the back corner, and it looks just like this. Big jars, little jars. Uh, if you didn't get to put your change in for the kids this week, there's a little receptacle. You can put that or just save it for next time. Um, our, prayer request list, our prayer request list is getting rather long, um, and it gives us plenty to pray about. And, uh, and so I'm going to give us our our list of, of folks, and then we'll take some more, okay? Um, we're, we're lifting up Eva Shepard, Carrie Ralph, little Simon, Ashley Bowen, Frank Root, Debbie, and Memphis, who are all suffering from cancer. Um, and so we're, uh, we're asking for the Lord his, for his mercy. Um, we're continuing to lift up the Vansel family. Marita Rissler is healing. Um, and, uh, and we're just going to continue to pray for her continued well-being. Um, the gardeners, the, the Tolsons, we're lifting up still. And uh, we're lifting up Sharon Fouracre for continued recovery. And also um, a lady by the name of Teresa, 
um, she underwent a very stressful event and um, is, is in great need of uh, the Lord's mercy and his care. Uh, does anyone else have, um, would, uh, would you give me um, the name of, uh, of your relative that we talked about last week, Penny? I wrote it, Brian, right? Okay, okay, all right, we're going to pray for that. Yes? I spoke to Simon's mother this week, and she has a strange request at this point. It's ungrateful. Okay. So she's asking that we actually pray that something pops up at this point. Okay. So if you just want to keep your prayers in mind. Okay, okay. Um, for those of you all who didn't hear and who are watching online, um, there's been word that it seems that he's untreatable right now. And um, that puts it right into the realm that uh, makes it so effective for Christians. Because we know that God is in control and that he is in charge. And he loves this boy. He loves this boy. And he loves this family. So um, we can trust him. We can trust the Lord. Anybody else? Yes, Mona. Ray. Okay. Okay. Sandy. Yep. Yep. Some. Uh, we've got. We've still got uh, some sick folks out there right now. So uh, we are lifting up Randy and Lorna. And Dale and Sally. Uh, we do have a joy. Um, the tropical storms that passed through the uh, past few weeks have brought rain, much needed rain to Haiti. So uh, the rain that we prayed for came. God is good. God is good. So, uh, so we rejoice in answered prayer. But as we prepare our hearts now for the word, let's go to the Lord with our requests. Heavenly Father, as we remember those who are sick and suffering, we remember that your grace is enough. Lord, is. As we pray, I ask that you would stir within us compassion. That we come before you now on behalf of someone in need. God, we ask that you continue your healing work over Eva Shepherd and Carrie Rao. God, we ask that you might show yourself mighty in Simon's life. God, help us never to get caught down here when we pray for people. Help us to remember the eternal purpose of each and every soul here. It was to be a soul that Loves and longs after you, God. So God, in the time that our loved ones and our friends have, if they do not know you, God, would they come to know your saving grace? So God, we ask for healing. Above the physical, God, we ask for the spiritual healing of those who are sick. Lost without you, God. Lord Jesus, we, we thank you for the rain, for the answered prayers. And so, God, we thank you for the answered prayer of successful surgery for Sharon. And we ask for the continued healing of her body, the continued healing of Brian, and Ray, Larna, and 
Randy and Dale and Sally, God, all of those who are ill right now, and be with Teresa, Lord, wherever she may be today. Remind her of your great love and protection over her life. Remind us, Lord, over what you've done for our, our lives, what you've done for us through your word. May it come to life today for us. May we receive a gift from you as we peer into your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. So we've made it to the end of our journey through the Philippians. Now we've scratched and pecked at some really great, important points. And uh, I, was, I was just sharing this morning, one of, one of the Bible teachers that I listened to, uh, he, he said, we've, it's been a wonderful two years in the book of Philippians, together. I was like, two years? Wow, I got, a, I, I got a lot more studying to do. We got, we got 18 more months? No, that's 16. No, that's not right. That's not right. We got a long time. No, we're done. We're coming to the end, you guys. Math was never my strong point. Um, but uh, we've got 20 months. We've only done it 22 months. We've only been in it for two months. I don't even know how long we've been doing this. It's, I'm so lost. All right. No, we're good. We're here. Um, for the past two months, we have shared in a joyful, loving pastor share his heart with his people. We have seen his call to unity within the body. We have seen a call for humility within the body, one to another, always considering others as better, better than ourselves. And and undoubtedly, we have all felt the burning conviction of those words. To stand up here and to tell us to rejoice in the Lord always. Always, and again I say, rejoice. I don't do that. I don't know anybody who does. I know a whole lot of people who understand the concept. They have read that, and they are trying, and they are absolutely miserable. Family, God gives us instruction that reminds us, God, I can't do that without you. There is absolutely no way that I can be joyful in the middle of this circumstance. Are you kidding me right now? Do you have any idea what I'm going through? Well, church, as a matter of fact, he does. And he has divinely orchestrated every circumstance to lead you and to lead me into a blissful joy that only comes from the peace of the Lord. We can have that. Paul told us that. It can be ours. I want that. Don't you? I don't... uh, The peace that passes all understanding. And it's not a blasé, it's all good, let go and let God, He'll take care of it because His grace is enough. That's grabbing a whole lot of Scripture and pulling them all together out of context. Okay, It's all true, but if it's out of context, it's not helpful. It's not going to be helpful for us. Because it takes work for the Christian. It's a constant surrender. And it's a constant battle. The enemy loves distracted, 
frustrated, angry Christians because it gives God a bad name. So he thinks. So the world thinks. The world is so lost. Yeah, there's, there's some of us who have figured out that there's a secret. And his name is Jesus. And even though a lot of people have said a lot of things in the name of Jesus, there's only one Jesus. There's only one, and, and, and He is offering us peace that goes beyond our understanding. So if we are lacking in peace this morning, we are lacking the very presence of God in our lives. If, if we are setting ourselves up against the knowledge that God has plainly Set before us. We are keeping his peace away. He's keep, we're keeping our peace away. And I'm not really sure where all that came from. Because that's nowhere in any of my notes today. So you can have that. I don't know if it works for you or not. Um, but the whole purpose of us wrapping up Philippians is for us to understand the emphasis of the joy of Christian giving. First time I've really ever talked about that in length. But Paul says to us, as we remember that he is been speaking directly now to the church body when he said that I know how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere in all things I've learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's where we left off last week and so I want to take us now through the end he continues his thought, Nevertheless, you have done well that you shared in my distress. Now, you Philippians, know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessities. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And he concludes with this wonderful statement, And my God shall supply all your need, according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren who are with me greet you. All the saints greet you, but especially those who are of Caesar's household. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Paul wraps up this beautiful letter by bringing to mind this beautiful, generous, even though they were poor, this church giving to Paul and giving to Paul as often as they could. And we found out last week that it had been 10 years since there had been any sort of giving. And this is something that Paul wants this church to grow in and to abound in because the blessing that came upon this church for doing that for Paul had 
repercussions that have come through now to the ages. Paul needed their help. He didn't want to have to take the help, but he did. And there were congregations in which he would not. He makes a big deal about this when he says, Nevertheless, you've done well to share in my distress. Now you Philippians also in the beginning of the gospel. When I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. When he says that you've done well to share in my distress, let me get out of that. He's speaking about his ability to be content. Paul didn't want to give the impression that the Philippians had something to do with or something wrong with supporting Paul. But there was a real sense in which the giving Philippians, it was better for them than it was for Paul. You've done well to give to me. You've done well. Now the churches that struggled with this giving principle, Paul says a few things. He says to Titus, Titus was out in Crete, and he said, and, and let the people also learn to maintain good works, to meet urgent needs, that they may not be unfruitful. This fruit that, that Paul is, is speaking of comes from the generous heart of the saint. It's flowing out of them because of what God has done. He says in Corinthians, did I commit sin in humbling myself that you might be exalted because I preached the gospel of God to you free of charge? I robbed other churches, taking wages from them to minister to you. And when I was present with you and in need, I was a burden to no one. For what I lacked, the brethren who came from Macedonia supplied me. Paul just cannot stop praising this church in Philippi. They're always seeming to do the right thing. And in everything I kept myself from being burdensome to you. And so I will keep myself. The relationship with Paul with the Corinth church was a stressed one. They had trouble with his gospel. They, didn't, they, they, they were living in the center of all sorts of lewdness and worldliness. And so his message was tough for them to hear. And so he kept himself from needing money from them. Now, I don't say any of that to ask money from you or that I'm not well established by your, your pay here. But what God wants us to know is that it's so much more. The gift of giving is so much more for the Christian than it is for someone who's just generous. When we give to God, we're giving to His purpose. And He wants our hearts to be aligned with His purpose. He wants us to abound in every good work. Paul brings us back to the fact that it was a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And it wasn't about how big the gift was. It was the fact that it was given in love. And then he assures us, I don't know about you, but sometimes it's really good to be reminded that our God will supply all of our needs. It doesn't say that He's going to supply all your wants, right? But He does say that He will supply all of your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Paul reminds us of His all-sufficiency yet again. For a Christian to be joyful, a Christian must understand how all-sufficient Christ is. He is supreme. And if we don't have Him, we have nothing. God has supplied all of our need according to His riches and glory 
so that we might be fruitful in the ministry. Not so that we'll have our needs met or we'll be comfortable. We've got to learn not to be comfortable. Right? If we're comfortable all the time, then we're not getting, getting pushed. We're not suffering. And if we're not suffering, then we may not be walking this faith thing out with enough boldness. We've been called to suffer. We've been called to give sacrificially, and sometimes that causes us to go without. But that's okay. But that is okay. And finally, he finishes off by calling them saints. That's a hard thing for us to deal with. That's a, that's a word that we don't really throw around all that much in, in, in the church. Right? And, un, and unfortunately, that is because the Catholic Church got it wrong. They've idolized saints. We, we can go to beautiful cathedrals and see the statues all over the building. You, you, you are instructed to pray to this saint if you're in this line of work. Or to that saint if you're in that line of work. Friends, that's heresy. It's not, go, it's not okay at all. Jesus is our great high priest. He has passed through the heavens, but he now sits and makes intercession for us. The only person alive to make intercession in heaven, my dear beloved friends, is Jesus. And he is the only one who we pray to. If you know people who continue to do this kind of idolatry, help them. Look, the whole system has has ruined the phrase saint. It means to be set apart. To be holy. And every single soul in this building who has been redeemed by the blood of Jesus is holy. Is a saint. In Christ Jesus. That's where our sainthood comes from. It doesn't come from some supernatural act that we do that causes us to be better than someone. That's all that system has done. It's elevated man. And then put them in some place of intercession for people. Folks, help them. If you know people who are caught in Catholicism, it's not The true religion. It doesn't save you. Because it's a works based faith. And there's something called purgatory. Something made up that's not real. okay, Not in the scripture. Anywhere. And somehow you can pray to a saint that is their job to pray them out. And if you light a candle, as long as the candle is lit... You're praying. Guys. We, the truth that we have been given is so precious. Look, and there's, I, I am not being ugly and I'm not being mean. And if it's coming across that way, I'm sorry. I'm very passionate about the truth of Jesus Christ. And it is only attainable through His work. Through His work. We get to believe in that work. And to trust that it's enough. That it's enough for us to be found in the presence of God. At the end. And if you allow your heart... To grab a hold of the truth that Jesus' work was enough for you. It was enough. You don't need to try to do it. Whatever we make it. The gospel is simple. Believe the Lord Jesus. Love Him. Follow him. Follow him. Jesus never told us to light a candle for someone. 
Jesus never told us that there was somewhere else that we might go if we don't quite get it right here. He didn't tell us that. What a joy. What a joy. Could you imagine the pain that would cause? There's going to be a lot of people who know that pain. We don't have to. We don't have to. God has given us everything that we need. He gave us His Son while we were yet sinners. And His Son died for us so that we don't have to die. Our bodies will die, but our soul will live on. And it can only go one of two places. One is eternally separated from God, and one is with God. There is no in-between. And we choose where we go here. We have to remember that our life is speaking the story of our choice. He called us saints. There's tons of songs out there. An angel with no halo and one wing in the fire. Now, there's another one. We don't become angels either, guys. This is beautiful, beautiful truth. We do not become angels. We don't have to worry about that. He's already made them. We're done with that. But down here we get to choose. Are we going to choose to walk in the joy that Jesus died for us to have? Or are we going to choose something else? If you choose something else, you will not rejoice in the Lord because He will not be there. Choose the truth. If, you, if you're struggling this morning with feelings of contempt for people, feelings of self-worth issues, if you're uncertain about what tomorrow's going to mean for you. If you're uncertain about where your next windfall of money is coming from, trust in the Lord to provide everything that you need. Everything that you need. And rejoice that you've gotten from the Lord what He promised you. Sometimes that means asking for help. If we don't ask, we won't receive. God wants us to ask. He is a good, good Father. And we're loved by Him, aren't we? We'll sing that today. But as we prepare to close... I. Paul is teaching us something so much more than a cookie cutter style of living. This is radical. This is not something that, that we'll do on our own efforts or we'll check the box off. I was generous today and I was glad. No, no, God wants so much more for us than that. Look, we... We sang this morning, great is thy faithfulness. I love that song. It's so rapturous. You can really lose yourself in that song. What a, what a great place to get lost in the faithfulness of God. Whatever we need, whatever it is that we need, God will provide for us. Fear not. We have nothing to be afraid of. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we bring the book of Philippians to a close, as we put it away now for a while, help the truth to remain in our heart. Lord Jesus, help us to remember that in you we can learn to be content, not just when it's going well. 
God, if we get anything from this, may it be that. We should be known as a people of great contentment. Our souls satisfied by the only one who can. Help us to let you satisfy us. Won't you bind our wandering heart to you, O oh God? Lord, it's an old song, but when I think of being called saints, I can't help but think about when the saints go marching in. I know how I want to be in that number. Lord God, help us to be numbered among those saints. we might join our hearts together with yours, that our mind might be renewed to think just like you, Jesus, and to love, not for what we might receive, but for what we could give. Open our hearts, Lord. Open our hearts to the truth of the gospel that you are enough. You're enough for me. All I have to do is receive the gift that you've given me. God, even though we can't put it down, it's something that you have imparted to us. Your righteousness is something we can't get rid of. Help us not to forget that we have it on. Help us to live this Christian life, this upward call that you have placed on our hearts that we might see and do the good works that you've placed before us and do them in joy. Father, wouldn't it be our joy to serve you with gladness and singleness of heart? Surrendered to you, Jesus. Jesus, as we surrender one more time, yet again, today. We're reminded of the prayer that you taught us. So we, as your disciples, pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, let's stand as we go today and sing.
Father God is who we are. And so as we go today, go with this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, beloved. Thank you.